Hello everyone, Agent X007 here. In this video I will show you 7800 GS AGP video card running on Alive Dual ISATA 2 motherboard with Phenom 2 980X4 CPU. Booting Windows using this software right here and booting it from NVMe drive now I did use um, Clover software to emulate EFI um, or UEFI booting but uh, there are some quirks let's say it like that with AGP and NVMe um, this is uh, simply my way of uh, easy troubleshoot because th with the standard Metro uh, booting on Windows you don't get the easy F8 to save mode but the bigger issue is this right here this is uh, interrupt issue I believe so you need to do a bit of clicking on the power button because this is my uh, power and uh, reset buttons so keep clicking until the light on the adapter gets uh, permanently uh, permanently blinks or when you hear the fan spin up again there you go and long and behold here we go So not easy, but it is do doable. Now let's go do some uh, basic tests. So here's the AIDA64. This is my boot device. Um, it's a complex flash card with eight gigabytes of memory on it. Nothing too fancy. It's simply uh, enables windows uh, not windows enables booting from devices devi for device that has clover software on it um, other than that here's my nvme drive it's a samsung sm951 so pretty basic 128 gigabyte but <laughs> it works no issues there um, motherboard eSATA 2 um, chipset And as you can see, fast write and sideband addressing are indeed enabled, and current speed is 8x on the window on the graphics card. Now there is a small quirk with it, just so you know, it's not all rosy. Um, so when I go to CPU Z, for example. there is no uh, model and manufacturer but here's the here's the sad part um, the card is technically working at 8x uh, but I can't do anything with it um, no 
3D marks, no games, no anything because code 43 error. Sadly, um, that's not driver. I think from Nvidia side, it's simply driver from the host to PCI. Um, I am using WinRaid driver from 2004 because this is the only driver that's uh, available from this for this platform or in 64-bit version. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it does what it says it does, but basically um, it doesn't work that well. Um, it's there. As you can see, the the AGP eight X is uh, is working, but I don't know if Windows ten simply doesn't support at all AGP or something because if it works at full speed on Enforce boards on Enforce, um, this is what I get. So yeah, but back to our topic. Um, here's the AGP card and this is my quick test of the NVMe storage that I'm booting from. Now this is a PCIe 1.1 or 1.0, I'm not sure right now, uh, board and chipset. So it should be... Uh, at around one gigabyte max, gigabytes per second max on either read or write, but the actual value is 800 megabytes per second, so over 800 megabytes per second, so pretty good, I think. <laughs> this board supports uh, for uh, eSATA, uh, eSATA 2, um, 300 megabytes per second tops that's uh, never going to happen so it's more like 270 to 80 so way 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 faster than SATA now why I keep uh, using my mouse um, if I don't do this uh, like with the booting you saw earlier um, the board will freeze or Windows will freeze and keeps uh, will um, keep keep ticking <laughs> like a slideshow um, once every three seconds, four seconds, and it would be it's not great, <laughs> but the benchmarks also get affected by it. So you have to keep moving mouse or keep um, pressing one of the keys on the keyboard just for interrupts to work kinda okay. Now I'm using um, PS2 keyboard so it does interrupts with its each keystroke. So I don't know, sadly, if USB keyboard will work, but yeah, since my mouse works, I believe it will as well. Um, I didn't test it. I simply got it to work right now, so I don't want to push my luck. Um, so yeah. And we are almost done with the tests.
and the last one. And there we go. So here's our, our, our results in the IOPS as well as the megabytes per second. Okay, let's go with ASSSD as well. And drop the 4K test. Seven hundred and thirty megabytes on the read half gig for write and access times pretty nice Let's go one sec inside ADA sixty four. go I will try to make a screenshot of this mess <laughs> um, I'm not sure I will be able to put everything in one shot nah it's not possible So this gets dropped, switch this to this, since we didn't get the store a score we can as well just do it like that. Okay, now this is pretty nice. I will add this. Um, my uh, to my description if you are wondering or don't want to watch the whole video for it um, okay let's validate it okay validated and let's close all this I will show you guys my PC, uh, not PCI, uh, my uh, BIOS settings. Here's the here's nice trick. Locked. I move the mouse, unlocks. Stop. Move. 
yeah. What can I say? This is uh, standard stuff. <laughs> you need to deal with if you will try to copy what I'm doing here or replicate, I should say. Okay, so let's go to BIOS. Nothing to see here, but yeah, this is uh, what I used to s uh, stabilize my rig, so it may not work for your case, because you may get slower memory than me, or CPU isn't uh, good enough, or maybe your cooling solution isn't good enough, but this is what I used, so auto here, and yeah 3.7 gigahertz on cores and 2.6 on north bridge 32 megabytes on aperture size because if i did more than that sometimes my os would not boot again nvme on a gp or maybe not NVMe fault, but uh, Windows 10 fault. This board isn't really meant for Windows 10, so... Here's my big, very big hint. Do not try to do what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's quite hard to do, <laughs> even if you know what you are doing. And uh, yeah, it may not uh, really work out for you. So what I did is uh, disable SATA controllers completely, all of them, so two of them. And uh, I did not install this particular Windows using this board. I simply picked my X79 NVMe drive and stick it here with the adapter of course so here's the booting drive with the clover software there's no floppy and floppy control is also disabled and all other stuff is also disabled and the usb control uh, by the way if you disable this you won't be able to boot um, from any USB pen drives, so yeah, don't do it. <laughs> Keep it on enabled or at least auto. Um, yeah, nothing to see here, and only one drive to pick from the list, so no issues there. Um, right, save and exit. Um, and that's basically it, I think. Um, I will show you what I'm using. So here's the adapter. This is Asus Hyper M.2 X16 card. This is V2 version. Um, it uh, it has better VRMs than the stock one, than the V1 or original version. Pretty nice. NVMe drive itself. Of course, this. Uh, uh, this adapter is uh, not meant for this motherboard um, but it does work of course only the first slot because the first slot uh, is x4 and this is x4 motherboard just so you know it's not x16 now for the gpu
come out. There we go. Here's the GPU. It's a really nice card. I quite like it. It has a particular pixel um, count. But other than that, it's uh, quite powerful for AGP. And the last piece is the compact flash adapter. So yeah, it's a pretty basic adapter. I bought it for three bucks, I believe, locally. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, I hope you do not <laughs> try to uh, replicate what I did here, but at least you now know it is possible to do. So, thanks for watching and see you around.